If you look at the word Christian, if you flip it around, it means it's, it's spelled Antichrist. Why is that? And this goes along with Matthew 24, 24, when, it's, when Jesus said that many will, call, will, will come in his name saying, I'm the Christ, or they represent Christ. But they will be workers of iniquity. Now, if the Bible is warning you and telling you this, why can't you see that church, religion, the Bible has been used as a form of your enslavement? Why have we never asked as a people, what is the sin gene? Because, see, the hard, the hard part about trying to get Christianity over on people who know is that, first of all, this text, the, the, the Old Testament, is a Judaic text. Actually, it comes from the Egyptian and Sumerian text. They were taken, and they were copied, and they were made renditions of, first, in this purified form, as a reminder of the old, tech, of the old lessons of old. But then, when the Europeans got a hold of the text, they changed everything. They created Jesus. There has never been a white person in the history named Jesus that died for your sin. That is not true. To prove it, let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 16. Because if Jesus died for your sin, then the Bible should support that. Parents are not to be put to death for their children. No children are put to death for their parents. Each of you will die for your own sins. Each would die for their own sins. So therefore, the Old Testament, and Jesus said in 517, what did he say? Pull it up. What, which one? 516. I'll tell you what. You pull it up so the people can see, I'll say it. Which one is it? Matthew, Matthew chapter five, yeah, chapter five, uh, verse sixteen. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophet. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So therefore, if Jesus followed the law. That means that he was not preaching a doctrine about him coming down for your sins. Because he follows the law, the law of Moses. How many laws are there of Moses? Do anybody know? How many laws are Moses? 613. But they say 10 because 6, 1, and 3 equals 10. And then that goes on to with the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah 10 on the uh, spear represents the physical plane. Because as you go back to the zero, that represents the immaterial plane, and as it manifests through the uh, various number form, 10 is the physical. This And the laws that Moses came to give were the physical laws of hygiene, religious rights, and they all governed the physical. But Jesus gave the spiritual interpretation of the law. He gave the fulfillment of the law. He didn't change the law. The person who changed the law was Paul. Most of our people do not follow Jesus. They follow Paul because Paul was the one who changed from persecuting Christians to actually becoming one. He didn't become a Christian because he was trying to enlighten people. He became an agent provocateur. This is why his followers were called Christian. Jesus, you can never find a New Testament where Jesus was called a Christian. They were first called Christian in Antioch. And like I said, Christian turned backward is Antichrist. Look it up. Jesus said, follow the law. Paul said to disregard the law. Jesus did not eat pork. That's in Leviticus 11, 7, 8. Paul said it's not what goes in a man to follow the man, but what comes out of it. This is why today people do everything that Jesus said do or don't do, Paul said do. And this is the problem. But people don't understand that there were more than one Jesus. There were three Jesus that actually. The first one was named Cleophas. He was the son of Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. He was actually born on December 25th in 1 AD. The next Jesus was the one, Yahshua ben Meriam. He was the son of Mary. He was born in uh, 7 AD. And then the third Jesus was born September 17th, 
28 AD. This is the son of Jesus. This is the wicked sorcerer that's mentioned up in the Bible. Now, a lot of scholars have confused this because they didn't understand that it was three different Jesus that they were talking about at the same time. The Jesus that the Christian world worships is Simon Bar Jesus. Bar means son of, son of Jesus. You can find Simon Bar Jesus mentioned in the book of Acts. And I'm going to show you where you can find that so you can look that up yourself. The book of Acts is. Put up the first chapter of Acts, uh, first twenty six. Excuse me, no, Acts thirteen six. Through the island to Pegos, then found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew man, was Bar Jesus. Bar Jesus. See, a lot of Christians miss that, that Bar Jesus. And Bar in Hebrew means son of, so son of Jesus. So the, the, the last name or the surname would be who your father was, so Simon Bar Jesus. That's the Jesus that Paul meant. Now, Paul lets you know that he's a liar. Pull up Romans 3 7. Someone might argue, if my falsehood enhances God's truthfulness and so increases his glory, why am I still condemned a sinner? Now, here's a man that said he's inspired by God, but he lets you know that if his falsehood enhances, so in other words, if, he's a, if the truth abounds more abundantly through his life, then why is he judged a sinner? How can you trust a man that persecute Christians, then come around and then admits that he's a liar. Paul also, if you notice, he never even affirms the resurrection. He has doubt. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 13 to 17. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witness about God. For we have testified about God that he has raised. He raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him in fact. The dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith, fruitile, you are still in your sin. Now this is what Paul said. Now he said if he, he has doubt, he's not even sure because he know the truth. Jesus did not come to die for your sin. The proof of that is John, in the book of John, verse 11. John 18, verse 11. Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? 